from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Helen Sunter from Don Mills, Ontario. This Mass is offered in memory of her husband, for the living and deceased members of her family and friends, for a special intention, and in thanksgiving for all blessings received. Mrs. Sunter is here with us today, and we welcome you and thank you for this gift of the Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose gifts are countless and whose goodness is without limit, teach us, we pray, to use wisely the rich blessings of land and sea, to be attentive to the needs of others, and to give as freely as we have received, that we may, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father, through him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Gathered on the hillside with the disciples, Jesus began to teach them. Ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? In everything, do to others as you have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise On Thanksgiving Day, we are supposed to celebrate our thankfulness for all the good things that we have received. But what if this year has been a particularly hard one for you? What if you are going through chemotherapy for cancer, or facing a bitter divorce, or are one payment away from losing your home? What if the trials and disappointments you are facing make being thankful very difficult to do? Well, maybe I can help you make this Thanksgiving holiday a little bit better. All you have to do is think about three things. First, no matter, no matter how bad things are, there are still blessings to be counted. We are often less thankful than we should be because we focus far too much on our own pain and disappointments. We get caught up in self-pity, wondering, why me? We get so stuck on living in the past, longing for things that are long gone, or stewing over lost opportunities, that we feel there is nothing to be thankful for right now. But you have food, while so many in the world go hungry. You have clothes on your back, while so many do not even own a pair of shoes. You have a roof over your head, and people who care for you while many are homeless and alone. Count up all those small blessings that you take for granted, and you will see that you have much to thank the Lord for. We don't always thank God for those simple things of life because we live in a thankless world. There are people all around us working tirelessly for our well-being and our happiness. Do we even notice what they do for us? 
when someone sends us a greeting card or makes us a cup of tea or offers some help? Are we just too busy, too tired, too self-absorbed to say thank you? There is probably someone doing some small kindness for you right now. When was the last time you thanked them? The second thing we need for a happy Thanksgiving is the proper attitude towards life. It's easy to thank God for all the luxuries he sends our way and to complain about the setbacks, the pain and the grief. What is the first thing you do when something upsetting happens? When you feel like the blessings have quit flowing? What's the first thing you do when you find out that you do have cancer or you can no longer care for a sick spouse or an elderly parent? I tell you what you should do. Stop and thank God. Now, I know it sounds crazy to thank God for our misfortunes, but sometimes we Christians forget that in the midst of our suffering and our trials, that all things work together for good for those who love God. God has a way of turning setbacks into benefits, and this should not surprise us. After all, God turned death on a cross into eternal life. He can transform our hospital beds into blessings, our pain into strength, and our misfortunes into new opportunities. It can and will happen if we live by faith and learn to be faithful even in times of misfortune. Gratitude can be a powerful healing force, but those who don't learn how to praise God and give thanks during difficult times will grow bitter and pessimistic. If we live thankfully, opening ourselves up to God's blessings, especially when life is hard, we become a visible sign to others of God's blessings. The final ingredient for a happy Thanksgiving is to dwell on what we can give, not what we do not have. Giving is nothing new to us. It comes to us naturally. Mothers and fathers work hard to give their family what they need. Giving can lift our spirits. As a priest, I have found it a profound joy to be able to share something of my faith and myself with others. In our world, thousands of people are forced to flee their homes. And many developing countries, whole families live on wages of about 27 cents a day. In our own city, there are many who are jobless and homeless, depending on food banks to feed and clothe their children. How do we who have more than enough react to those who have less than enough? Do we write them off as hopelessly lazy? Do we blame the government? Are we so focused on our own problems that we do not even think about anybody else? The answers to the world's problems are very complex, but we can start to answer them by helping to make things a little better for someone who is near to us, perhaps as near as the next pew. Thanksgiving is about taking your eyes off yourself and looking at others. Holiday traditions can become very empty. Sometimes we just go through the motions from force of habit. Don't let that happen to you. Don't sit down to your Thanksgiving Day feast, mumbling some disconnected prayer, feeling less than thankful. Thank God for the real blessings of life. Thank him for the faith he gave you and how it sustains you in times of trials. Thank him for the resources he has given you that allow you to help others especially those whose lives are empty and thankless. Then maybe you will be able to celebrate 
this Thanksgiving with real gratitude. Let us now join our prayers together and ask God to help us to be more thankful for his presence in our life. We give thanks for our church. May it continue to witness to the presence of Christ in this world and inspire faith in God's people. We pray to the Lord. We give thanks for all those who are instruments of peace and hope, especially those men and women in our armed forces around the world. We pray to the Lord. We thank God for his gift of grace poured out on all people. May we use those gifts to help others in need. We pray to the Lord. We give thanks to God for all those in our television community who pray for us, and we ask God to continue to bless them through this televised Mass. We pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, help us to open our hearts in thankfulness and praise so that we can share our faith with all those who need you in their lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes, Blessed be God for our God. Lord God, we ask you to see the gifts we offer you with humble, contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. From your many gifts, O God, your thankful people offers you bread and wine, praying that by the grace of this sacrifice we may treasure all that you give, share your gifts with others, and use them for your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praise is at nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be saved. Let us pray. O oh God, in this Eucharist, show us the gracious depths of your love. Grant that we may share with others all that we hold in trust from you and live as people in true gratitude of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1 888 383 6277 for details. Did I hear someone say, not you again? Yep, it's me again, Mike McManus, but with good news this time. No more bleeding hearts. We're back on track financially. You responded to our appeal. You came through, as you always do. Makes me wonder, what would we ever do without you? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now relax, enjoy the singing each morning, the homilies, the prayers, and the coming of God's grace into your hearts, strength to help you face whatever challenges are coming your way that day. Thanks again. <laughs>